On today's episode, we'll chat about a finished object, my novice cardigan in progress, as well as a craft I don't think I've ever talked about. <laughs> I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. And if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm coming to you today from coastal South Carolina, and I'm in a little bit of a different spot in my studio. I am in front of one of my yarn racks. I just hung them up this past weekend. And before I would store all of my yarn on these, they're called grid walls, if you really want to know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> but they are basically metal grids in sheets and you can hang hooks from them and I've always hung my yarn from them just so I can keep track of inventory really well I can kind of see you know if there's certain colors that are missing and so I had them all configured together in a little clump, I guess. And so I've always really wanted to put them on the walls and I just moved around some furniture this weekend here in the studio and made it happen. And I absolutely love the result. And so what I did is I hung all of my yarn up by color. So I hung all of my warm tones on the top, which you can't see here. Um, I'm sitting right in front of the greens, as you can probably tell. And then I have cooler colors, blues and purples down below. And then on the other wall, right to this side of me, I have all of my tonals. And so I was shocked when I put my tonals up because I am out of so many colors. So for any of you who have been waiting for tonals, I now know that I am out of so many. <laughs> and so I'll make a conscious effort in the next several shop updates to put some tonals back into the shop. But yeah, I think the result's really, really pretty. And so every time I come into the studio now, I get greeted by all of my yarn, which is amazing. <laughs> Today I'm wearing my Inside Story sweater, which is a pattern by Her Heidi Kermeyer, and I love this sweater so much. I have loved it ever since I knit it. It's an absolutely wonderful pattern, so well written, and it fits so well. And I knit it from my Cook Pine colorway, which is just this really gorgeous tonal green. It's a deep green. Um, it's it's kind of a warm green. It does have some black in it. It obviously has some blues, some yellows. Um, it's a very complex color and I think I have one skein left in the shop. So I really, really need to put some more of this color because it's just beautiful. And I want to knit more with this color because I think it'd be so pretty in um, brioche. I think it'd be so pretty in color work. So yeah, I really, really love the sweater and I wear it all the time. It is so great for colder weather. And I made myself a cup of hot tea before I started filming. This is Stash Tea, their Sunny Orange Ginger flavor. This is such a great flavor, especially just for kind of gloomy days. It's very uplifting. It has that citrus, but then it has that super warming ginger. And so if you're feeling a little under the weather, if you're feeling just kind of gray, it's a gray day, this is a really, really great tea. And I included this in my vitamin C advent calendar last year because it was the perfect, perfect flavor for the theme of the advent calendar. All right, let's get started. I have a basket full of really fun things to show you today. The first one's a finished object and it is my strange brew sweater. This pattern is Strange Brew by Tin Can Knits. It's an awesome pattern. I have chatted about it on the last couple of 
episodes, but this was a sweater for my son. So it is the two to four year size. And I designed, sketched out all of the color work. And I just, I love, I love tin can knits patterns anyway, but this one is just so fun to kind of bring out your artistic side and create your own color work sweater without having to do all the math necessary for fitting and sizes and all that. <laughs> so it's so fun and um, he has worn it so much. I just picked off a fuzz on it already. Um, he has worn this so much, so much so in fact that he wore this as soon as I took it off the needles. I steam blocked the yoke at the very beginning, right when I split for the sleeves or right before I split for the sleeves. And I have not blocked the rest of the sweater at all, believe it or not. And I think it has turned out really, really cute. So what I did, I used all of this from my stash and the green color is duck egg green from, um, it's Cascade 220. And the rest of it is just yarn that I have dyed and I've used in other color work through the years. And so it's not, um, it's actually not colors that I keep in the shop. So it's kind of a light blue gray as well as a, ah, uh, it's almost like a denim blue or faded blue. Y'all, I'm looking at the sweater and there is like, there's some crumbs on it. I mean, this sweater has already been used. <laughs> I can't even believe it. But um, yeah, so I knit this a with a needle size smaller. I'm a loose knitter and I always do that on patterns. Very rarely do I use the called four needle in the pattern, um, but I knit the DK weight top down version of this sweater. So anyway, I just wanted to share with you the progress on that. The bottom is flipping up. Hopefully that will kind of block out with that color work. And yeah, I just think that this turned out so cute and wanted to give you a little update on it. It is big on him. But he wears it anyway because otherwise his older sister will take it for herself. She is five and he's almost three and so this is um, kind of would fit both of them and she really really wants this and <laughs> it's a bit of a competition so um, but he's enjoyed it and it's it's great for winter weather and the cold weather that we have now. So I just wanted to share that with you. I thought this turned out really cute and um, I like the color work mo motif. I think it turned out really, really cute, but all in all, great pattern and um, yeah, super, super happy with this. The next project that I want to share with you is the Novice Cardigan by Petite Knit. And I started knitting this I guess a couple weeks ago, I can't really remember. So I got pretty far on this. Um, it's just such a great knit. I'm having so much fun knitting it. And while I thought possibly I could wear it for uh, Valentine's Day thereabouts, I'm not going to be done <laughs> with it. But this is how far I am. And I have all kinds of things hanging off right now and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I knit the full size uh, for me. I'm doing, I knit this the small size that the pattern calls for. I guess it's, they call it size one. And I knit this just so it hits my high hip. And it's a really nice size. I really like that length. And as you can tell, I knit it in the round and added a steak, a steaking section right here, I guess. <laughs> and so the reason that I stopped is actually I ran out of my Noe mohair silk. And so how I'm knitting this, let me show you the yarn that I have left over real quick. I'm knitting this with my Lonnie DK base. This was from the Sun Club from September, 2020. Um, my Sun Club is a pre-order. It's a dyed to order 
um, semi mystery club. So you, I have mood boards for all of my clubs and you can kind of see the general idea of how I'm going to diet. And so this month, uh, from September, this month was just so bright and bold. It was really, really nice. I really liked it. And so I dyed up a sweater quantity and I paired a skein of the Noe Mohair Silk in Coral Conch, which is kind of a, um, it's an orange color almost. I don't know if you can see this orange here. It's a really pretty, it's almost like a neon cantaloupe color. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, I just wanted to warm up that pink a little bit more because it looks better with my skin tone. And so that's what I did. I got gauge on size 11 needles, I believe. Yeah, or no, size 10. A size 11 is what's called for in the pattern. So I knit this on a size 10 and then I'm using a US size nine, which is a five and a half millimeter for all of the rib. And so what I did is I uh, cast on, this is a top down pattern. And so I cast on the rib along the neckline and then I just started knitting it in the round, but I added about eight stitches thereabouts. Uh, so I would have enough room for a steak. And then what I did on either side of the middle stitch is I actually crocheted um, the legs, if you will, or the sides of each V on each of that stitch. And so I'll have a guide to cut the steak and or steak the sweater. <laughs> and I'll show you a close up in just a minute. Um, but then after I did that, what I did is I actually picked up four the button bands and I like to do that um, I've done that before on my sweaters just because it makes it a little easier for me, I guess, to knit the button bands. And so I have one button band done with button holes and then the other side, um, I ran out of yarn. So let me give you a close up of this. All right, hopefully you can see this, but I have completed this button band and then this one, see it still has the needle in it, so it's not yet complete. But I have taken the middle column of stitches and knit stitches are in a V like that. And so I've taken the leg on either side of this, I guess the, the V stitches here, the V stitches here, I've taken and crocheted on either side. And so I will cut right in between this. And then what I will do is I am going to fold this under and I haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna finish it. If I'm just going to hand stitch it down, if it will need to be covered, I kind of figure it out <laughs> when I see how the fabric looks and uh, what it needs but this part here will be underneath. This will be the side closest to me as well as this. And so this will just get folded over and this will be the front of the cardigan as well as this. If you have your own questions about steaking, um, definitely leave me a comment. I'll try to help you out. You can also contact me on my website and that's a that probably the best way to get a hold of me, but also Tin Can Knits, again, awesome place to get resources. Um, they have an, I think it's a blog post called Steak. And so if you do a web search for uh, Steak Tin Can Knits, they have a really, really great tutorial exactly how to do this. And I'm pretty sure that's the resource I used to steak for the first time and it worked out really great. And so that's just what I do now. Um, but yeah, so, so far this is turning out really cute. I just need to dye another skein of coral conch on my Noe mohair, mohair silk. And so I get started on this again. This has been a really fun knit. So far the pattern is super straightforward and um, 
I kind of went off and did my own thing with the steaking and the button bands and all that, but it's very true to the pattern, uh, except for the fact that I'm steaking it. <laughs> but the pattern is really great. So I'm really, really enjoying it so far. And um, I'm very focused on trying to get it finished so I can wear it while the weather is still cold here because soon enough it will be warm and mohair definitely will not be in my wardrobe <laughs> for a while. But I thought it was really cute and um, yeah, just a really fun departure from knitting something like this. And I love the colors too. The colors are gorgeous. So I did something fun this week and it's something that I have never, I haven't done. Um, and I don't even know if I've even talked about it on this channel or anything like that. But I thought it would be fun to try something new and pick up something new. So <laughs> last week I told you that, um, or I mentioned that my project bags always have leftover skeins of yarn from projects and I just don't clean them out. I'll, I'll have random cakes of yarn, especially, you know, big project bags like this. Um, we'll have a random cake of yarn or several random cakes of yarn. And I had some cakes from my slip extravaganza. And um, so one night, um, I think it was the night that I had actually ran out of yarn for my novice cardigan. I was kind of at a standstill. And so I thought, you know what? I am going to take my leftover skeins uh, from my slip extravaganza and I'm just going to start crocheting a blanket. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> so let me show you where I'm at right now. <laughs> yes, I have a little mini blanket that I crocheted granny square style from all of my slip extravaganza leftovers. And so I guess this this is just so funny because I have not crocheted in years and that's where I really really got into yarn, I guess. Um I started off by crocheting uh, when I was very young and um moved into knitting when I decided that I really wanted to start making more garments and I really wanted to learn how to make socks and so that's why I taught myself how to knit but before then I would make cute accessories and whatnot that were crocheted but in all the time that I crocheted, I never made a blanket and, or not that I remember, I, I just don't, I don't think I did. And so I just think it's funny um, that I'm doing this right now, <laughs> but I think that it's really pretty. I love it. Um, this is two strands of fingering weight held together. And I did do some sort of a pattern. So what I did is I, did just a really basic granny square pattern and I'm, I'm going to make this just like a one giant granny square and I took and I would do I would hold one skein of yarn or one color of yarn and then do the other three colors with that one yarn and then I would just switch and I would do another color of yarn with the with the other three held with it and so this is a double stranded kind of marled blanket and you know the other thing that I think is really funny about this is that the little booklet that I taught myself to crochet from uh, actually was all granny squares it was from I want to say it was from the late 60s or early 70s. It was a little booklet that my grandma gave me. She was cleaning out things and found a hook and found this little booklet and asked if I wanted it. Um, but it was like granny square vests and granny square... Just, I remember specifically the granny square vest with fringe. <laughs> and so I just think it's funny that I taught myself to crochet 
crocheting granny squares, but I never really made anything like a blanket. So honestly, I don't think I had the attention span <laughs> when I was a kid to uh, crochet a blanket, but yeah, I've never made any kind of scrappy blanket. I'm not like a scrappy project type person, but I have a lot of leftover yarn. And so I just decided to go for it. And this is all of my leftovers. So last night I used the last skein and I have, let's see, you can see right here, I have a solid bit of the leftover, um, the leftover skein. So I just had a little bit of it of itself or by itself that I used both ends for. And so this morning, I really wanna continue my blanket. I'm having a really great time crocheting this. And so I went through my stash and found all this yarn that is kind of the same color family. And so I have uh, really like gorgeous peaches. I have some, you know, cream with speckles. Here's just an undyed skein or cake. I have some gold colors that I found all of the little leftovers from my Odyssey shawl. So I'll put those in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, it really is going to be quite scrappy. <laughs> um, I have a mix of DK weight as well as fingering weight in here. And I plan on holding fingering weight together like I did for the majority of this blanket. But then also I will do some rounds uh, that are just one strand of DK. And I think it's gonna turn out really cute. I, I know that this isn't, um, you know, some people plan and like do a lot of color management with their blankets and they turn out gorgeous. But this really is going to be uh, functional and I think it's gonna look great. This is a very, it's going to be a very warm and cozy and homey blanket. <laughs> but I'm really, really loving it. I'm so glad that I picked it up. I even dusted off my old crochet hooks for it. I'm using a um, size I, which is a five and a half millimeter for this blanket. And just like I said, just doing a really, really simple granny square pattern. Um, so I'm doing uh, the three double crochets. So basically the shell, I'm not doing any spaces in between. And then on the corners, I'm doing a um, a shell and then two, um, two or chain two and then uh, three double crochet, the shell pattern. So super, super simple. But I wanted to share that with you. And you know, I always see Kay, who is the crazy sock lady on um, YouTube. Hi Kay, if you're watching. <laughs> and um, she's always so inspirational with her scrappy projects and um, and I love that. It's just so, so fun. And it's a great way to um, do something for, for the family. And it's just cozy. And it's really nice to have. So anyway, there's my scrappy blanket that I am crocheting currently. And it's just been so fun. I'm really, really enjoying this. So anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I think this is the first time I have crocheted in years. I think it's the first time I've ever shown a crocheted project here on my YouTube channel. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it was really fun to jump back into that and start crocheting again. Before I finish the episode, I want to share with you some of my hedgehog minis, my hedgehog fiber minis that I am uh, pulling out day by day from my advent calendar. So I want to share those with you as well as a really fun surprise that I received in the mail. So I talked about this last week on my channel that I am opening up my Hedgehog Fibers advent calendar through the month of February. And so I think last week, let's see, maybe... I think I had days one through four. And so I think I shared with you these minis, which are so fun. Hope you can see those. They are so colorful and speckly and fun. 
Those are really, really fun. So I have a whole new handful to share with you this week. And so these are the ones, if I can hold all of them, these are the ones that I opened this week. How fun are those? They're all so pretty, lots of pops of neon green and purples and pinks, and we've got some deep blacks and grays. And so um, it was, it's been so fun opening all of them. Here's what I have so far. I have tons of these fun minis. And I think what I'm going to do with them, I, I think I mentioned last week, I would love to do a weaving project with them. And then because there are so much yarn in advent calendars, there really is so, so much for multiple projects. Um, what I would like to do is maybe since I'm starting to get into this scrappy blanket thing, maybe add it to a scrappy blanket. I think it might be fun. So um, yeah, I thought these were really, really cute and thought y'all might want to see them. Um, it's been fun. The kids are really still enjoying opening up the days. So um, yeah, it was fun and just a, something really fun to have in the month of February, just a nice little treat. So that is the update on the Hedgehog Fibers Advent Minis. And I want to share with you a really sweet surprise that I received in the mail. Um, this is from one of my customers and my friends. She knit the Rosie Sunflower hat and actually two of them and sent them to me. This is just gorgeous. This is one of them and I love it. This was, I'm pretty sure this was a yarn from Hedgehog Fibers. It might be their, um, I don't know if it's maybe a DK weight as well as the alpaca boucle held with it, but it is so beautiful. Um, it's the rosy sunflower hat pattern. I'll put details below as well as a link where you can find the pattern, but how fun is that? This is just so cute. This yarn is beautiful. And the hat is a really nice, uh, it's a nice size. It's just a little bit slouchy, but it's not overly, it's warm. I just, I really, really love this hat. So thank you so much for sending it to me and I'm definitely going to be wearing it. <laughs> it's still really cold here. And um, as much as I knit and do things, I give it mostly away. And so even though I am knitting a sweater for myself right now, but I give it mostly for my kids. I knit mostly for my kids or for gifts. And so even with hats, I don't even know if I have one for myself right now, which is crazy, but I was very excited to receive this and it was just such a fun surprise. So thank you so much for sending it to me. It was just really, it really made my day. It was so fun. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. I am going to be filming a shop update preview right after this, so stay tuned for that. And I hope you're doing so well where you are. I hope you're getting lots of crafting time and enjoying every minute of it. Thanks for hanging out with me today to talk about all of my knitting and crocheting. Hopefully next week I'll have some spinning and weaving for you as well but take care wherever you are and I hope you have an awesome day. <laughs> Bye.